Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, simplifying radicals, and this will be um, the first video of three that I do just to uh, keep the videos a little bit shorter. All right, now before I like to uh, simplify radicals, I like to have a list of my perfect square roots. Um, I'm going to use these perfect square roots to help me simplify my radicals and do it as short as I possibly can. Um, so I just went all the way up to like square root of 169. That usually is going to be good enough. All right, now I also have written over here, in case we, um, you're not aware of this, square root of like x to the fourth. Anytime I have an even exponent, it's just going to be x to the second. It will always be half of that exponent. All right, and that's due to uh, laws of exponents because I could take x to the second times x to the second, and when multiplying like bases, I add the exponents, that would get me back to that x to the fourth. Okay, so square root of x to the sixth then would be x to the third, half of that exponent. Square root of x to the eighth would be x to the fourth. So even exponents on our variables are going to be very, very helpful. All right, so let's uh, simplify this first example. I've got square root of 243. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find out which one of these perfect square roots goes into 243. So I'm going to take 243 divided by 4. I'm going to take 243 divided by 9. I'm going to take 243 divided by 16. And I want to find the largest perfect square root that will go into 243. Turns out that 81 times 3 is 243. So square root of 81 times square root of 3. And I always want to write that perfect square root first, all right, because then I can say, okay, square root of 81 is 9, and square root of 3 is simplified as far as I can, so 9 radical 3 is going to be my answer there. So my tree turned out to be relatively short. It was just two little lines. Now, I did 243 again here, uh, because I want to show you if, like you would not have gotten that it was 81 times 3. You would not have chosen the biggest perfect square root over there. Okay, maybe as soon as you start doing it, you went 243 divided by 4. Well, that doesn't go into it. 243 divided by 9, it does divide out evenly. 9 times 27 is 243. So if you would have chosen that one, you can still do the problem. It's just a little longer process. All right, so if you would have stopped right as soon as you found that 9 goes into it, all right, that's going to work because the square root of 9 is 3. So that right there is going to give us a 3. But then what you have right here is a square root of 27, which is not simplified as far as it can be. So now what you have to do is you just have to go back to the list, find another uh, perfect square that goes into 27. turns out to be 9 again because 9 times 3 is 27, and square root of 9 is a perfect square. This 3 would then just carry on down. Square root of 9 there is a 3. That radical 3 is as simplified as it can get. 3 times 3 is going to give me a 9. Square root of 3. All right, so there's nothing wrong with doing a problem like that. It just takes a lot, lot more steps and a lot longer to do. So your goal would be to find the biggest perfect square root that goes into the radical that you are trying to simplify. All right, now what I did this one, I threw this one in just because it had some letters in there. Um, usually I just like to break those up, separate and give myself a little bit more room. Um, I like to just work with the numbers and then work with the letters. So I break that up into the square root of 28 and square root of x to the seventh. And I deal with this just like I have the first two examples, and then I can deal with the letters separately. All right, so square root of 28, I'm going to look over here on my list. I'm going to find the biggest perfect square root that will go into it. I'm pretty sure it's 4, because 4 times 7 is 28, so square root of 4 times square root of 7. All right, square root of 4 is a 2, and square root of 7 then is simplified as far as I can go. All right, so I've taken care of the coefficient there. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to deal with this x to the 7th. Well, I know that I need even exponents to be able to have perfect squares. All right, using my laws of exponents, I can break that x to the 7th up into x to the 6th times x to the 1st. Okay, so, and I want to do that. It's always going to be the biggest even number right before that odd number right there. So x to the 6th square root times square root of x, and then it would be to the 1st there. Because when I multiply like bases, I add those exponents, I get back up there to the x to the 7th. All right, choosing this being the biggest even number right before that odd number, that gives me a perfect square. So this is going to simplify to x to the 3rd. 
and that square root of x is as small as it can go. All right, so now everything that I have taken the square root of, everything that I pulled out, I'm going to multiply together. So 2x to the third, 2x to the third. Now everything under the radicals I'm going to multiply. 7 times x is just 7x, so square root of 7x. All right, so the square root of 28x to the seventh simplifies down to 2x to the third times the square root of x, 7x. All right, so three short examples there um, just on the beginnings on how you simplify radicals. Um, if you like the video, uh, go ahead and uh, give me a like on this and share with your friends so that they can um, help to understand radicals too. Thanks.